Hey, it's Jason Rogers here. And in this video, I want to talk to you about negotiating purchase of a business and common mistakes people make and what you really want to do to get this correct. So first thing I see so often with clients, it's a bad habit that most people fall into is they want to over negotiate something and to keep negotiating without there being an agreement in writing that's signed by both parties, right? And so throughout the process of trying to buy a business, you're essentially going to find businesses that you like, you're then going to have usually an introductory conversation conversation with the seller of a business that you may want to buy. And then shortly after that conversation, what you really want to do as the buyer is submit an offer. Usually this will be in the form of an LOI, a letter of intent. You want to submit that LOI. And what often happens with buyers, new buyers that don't really understand this process, is they essentially will keep engaging with the seller and really trying to negotiate with the seller after having submitted that LOI, as opposed to simply letting the LOI do the talking and essentially saying, hey, look, either accept the LOI, counter with what you want to see or I'm out. And so what often happens is, you know, sellers will get the buyer to basically believe, oh yeah, we'll do a deal at this price or on these terms, but I don't really want to sign it just yet. Or they'll say, I'll sign it, but I won't have an exclusivity uh, piece in the LOI. Exclusivity is huge because it basically by keeping or by having an exclusivity clause in an LOI and your MA attorney will help you with all this. And by the way, I help you build a deal team if you work with me. And if you watch my videos, having a deal team is paramount and includes an MA attorney that will help you with these things. But an exclusivity item on your LOI, your letter of intent, ensures that the deal is yours for the taking as the buyer. Huge point, can't stress that enough. The deal needs to be exclusive to you so that you are the only buyer that this seller can negotiate with. But very often what sellers will try to do is they'll say, okay, we'll sign this, but you know, we do still wanna be able to talk to other buyers, but we really think we're gonna do a deal with you, but we just wanna make sure, and therefore we wanna be able to talk to the buyers. And a lot of rookie buyers will, accept this, which is crazy. You cannot do it. You need to make your offer, include an exclusivity provision and stick to that offer. And don't keep wasting time talking to a seller until they sign that agreement. I have a different client that wanted to just keep talking and talking and talking and talking to a seller. And I went on a call, actually enjoy my client. I do this for my premier clients. And I jumped onto the call with the seller and my client, the buyer was there and the seller was there and the seller's rep was there. And then I was there. And within about five minutes, I could already tell that there just wasn't going to be a meeting of the mind. And I remember, you know, my buyer wanted to pay about $3 million for this. It was a car wash. And the seller was saying, oh, you know, we want five million. And, you know, about 10 minutes in, I heard the seller essentially say, hey, you know, we already got offered 4.3, but we rejected that offer. And again, I knew my client wanted to pay about 3 million, maybe 3.5. As soon as I heard that, I immediately said, hey, do you know what? It sounds like there's no point for this conversation then, because if you've already rejected 4.3 million, then there's really nothing to say. We just don't believe this this car wash is worth 4.3 million. Therefore, why don't we just end the call now? Now, the seller acted like, oh, well, maybe there's a play, there's an opportunity, there's a chance, but he had already said what he needed to say. He already said, we don't want to accept something less than 4.3. In fact, we've already rejected 4.3. What's the point I'm trying to make here? The point I'm trying to make here is if a seller tells you what their number is, and if that number is way off of what your number is, walk away. Don't keep wasting your time.